وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول How to organize your timing as a student of knowledge How as a student of knowledge you should organize your time he says, فَإِذَا أَعْدَدْتَ دَرْسَكَ Once you have reviewed your lesson, إِلَى وَقْتِ الضُّحَى Until 4 uh, noon. Until 4 noon, he says, فَصَلِّ الضُّحَى So, Fajr, you started, um, you started your dars. إلى الضحى الأعلى فصلي الضحى then sit down and pray الضحى ثمان ركعات pray eight units of صلاة الضحى as you can see the student of knowledge his day starts from early time you pray Fajr and you stay up seeking knowledge review your lessons looking at your stuff until صلاة الضحى فصلي الضحى pray الضحى ثمان ركعات eight units of al-duha okay this is the the four noon prayer ثُمَّ تَشَاغَلْ بِمُطَالَعَةِ بِمُطَالَعَةٍ أَوْ نَسْخٍ إِلَى وَقْتِ الْعَصْرِ then keep yourself busy in what with regard to reading and copying text إِلَى وَقْتِ الْعَصْرِ أَنْتِ وَعَصْر what are you doing? You're going to do mutala'a, you're going to read. And you're going to, nasq uh, means to copy a book. Back in those days, that Ibn al-Jawzi is talking about, they didn't have what we have today, which is uh, printed books. So the student had to have a time where they sit down, where they copy a book. So for example, there's no printing machine. So if I want this book, what do I have to do? I have to write it myself. If I want Fathul Bari, which is the explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, what do I have to do? I have to physically write it. Even Bukhari, if I wanted it, I had to write the whole hadith with my own hand. If I even wanted the 40 hadith of Ali Imam al-Nawi, I had to write it my own self. So he's saying, from Salatul Duha until Salatul Asri, read or make it a time for you to uh, copy text, to do nasq, copy a book, and uh, writing it in your own in your uh, own uh, book. Because remember, the book is not yours originally. You're gonna have to return the book, and you're gonna have your copy that you've copied from it. So, this sunnah of praying salatul duha is the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. It's something our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam did, and Al Imam al Bukhari. And Muslim both narrated fi sahih hima in the sahih uh, that Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla rahimahullah he said ma haddathana ahadun annahu ra'a nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalli al-duha gaira ummu hali no one saw the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pray salatu al-duha except ummu hali she saw him and she said fa innaha qalat she said in the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet entered his house. Yom Fath Mecca, when the conquest of Mecca was happening, Fagtasala he showered, Wasalla Thamani Rakatin, and he prayed eight units of prayer. She said, Ubu Hari, Falam Ara Salat, and Achafa Bina. I never saw any prayer that the Prophet ever prayed more lighter than that prayer. And he wasn't long, very light prayer. غير أنه يتم الركوع والسجود. But that being said, he was making sure that the ruku' was done properly and the sujood was done properly. So from here, the hadith of Imam Bukhari and Muslim narrated and Abu Dawood and others, which is that Salat al-Duha, to pray what? Salat al-Duha and eight rak'ah is very good because of what the Prophet did, alayhi salatu was salam. After you do that, you sit down and you read something. It can be something very small, brothers and sisters. It doesn't have to be a lot. Something. You know this brain, if you do not exercise it, 
the IQ level of your brain, or you yourself, you just don't become smart anymore. You lose the ability to read something. Khasatan, when it comes to the religion, try to read the religious knowledge. But gain knowledge. It's important. A lot of us don't give importance to reading. We don't value reading. But Wallahi, reading, brothers and sisters, is very important. And that's why the first thing that came down in the Quran was Iqara. Imagine that, brothers. Like the first word in the whole entire Quran is read. Like you think to yourself, is that how important it is? Yes. Allah is saying to us, Iqara. Bismi Rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al insana bin alaq. Iqara again. Again, second time. But if you look at that verse that came down, and a few things were mentioned. And guess what was the most mentioned thing? Was reading, the pen, knowledge. Those are the three main things that were mentioned. Iqara, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. Iqara wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil qalam. Qalam, allama, iqara. This is what it is. This is what our religion is. So anyone who says to you, Islam is not a religion that gives importance to knowledge, really hasn't, hasn't looked at Islam as a religion. Islam is for knowledge and learning and acquiring knowledge and attaining knowledge. So the Shaykh is saying, preoccupy yourself, busy yourself, then return, he says. He says, return to your studies until Maghrib. From Asir ila Maghrib, go to your lessons now. Study. Fa'ud ila durusika. Go back to your, yani, fa'ud uh, ila darsika, sorry. Min ba'di al-asri ila waqti al-maghribi. Wa salli ba'da al-maghribi rak'atayni bi juz'aydi. Then pray, he said, two units, okay? Yani, after you pray Maghrib, pray two rak'ah sunnah. Okay, reciting two juz of Quran in them. Wow. And he wants us to, one juz in one stand, and the other juz in another stand. This is the sunnah, it's not the wajib. And the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, Maghrib was one of the longest prayers that he used to lead. He one time, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, recited the entirety of surah uh, al-an'am. In Surah to, in Surah to, Salat al Maghrib, Surah to Al An'am, 23 pages the Prophet led in Salat al Maghrib, Alayhi Salat al Salam, all of Surah Al An'am, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Maghrib is already a long prayer. Imagine the Sheikh is saying, after you've led that long, long Maghrib, your Sunnah should be two Jews. Allahu Akbar. فَإِذَا صَلَّيْتَ الْعِشَاء Now, once you pray Isha, فَإِذَا صَلَّيْتَ الْعِشَاءَ فَعُدْ إِلَىٰ دُرُوسِكَ Why did he not mention after Maghrib and Isha in between it? Why did he not mention it? The Salah is going to take from that time. The Sunnah will take the entirety of the Salah at that time. So a person who prays Maghrib, the Salaf used to say, Isha should come in. Because Isha should be right after it. And that's how they were, Rahimahullah. Ibn Abi Mulaika was mentioned that he was like that. This is outside Ramadan, by the way, brothers and sisters. Some of them, they used to break their fast and they used to stand up. And they used to pray Maghrib, the Sunnah of Maghrib, and Isha would come in, back to back. They never would leave the masjid. Um, and some of them used to consider that time to be their i'tikaf. The Prophet mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the person who prays and stays in where he prayed, and doesn't move from it, until the next prayer is like he's in what? He sits there, even if he's not praying, it's like he's in a prayer. Even if he's not praying, he stays in his place. So he prays Maghrib, and then he sits there until Isha, doesn't do anything, recites Quran, does his adhkar, sits where he's praying, or where he prayed, he's in a prayer. So even if you don't have the ability to pray, just sit between Maghrib and Isha in the masjid and sit there until Isha you pray. Unless if you have unless you have something to do. فَإِذَا صَلَّيْتَ الْعِشَاءَ When you pray Isha فَعُدْ فَعُدْ إِلَى دُرُوسِكَ ثُمَّ الضَّجِعْ عَلَى شِقِّكَ الْأَيْمَنِ Once you prayed Isha, 
Go back to your lessons. And then go and sleep and lie on your right side. فَسَبِّحْ ثَلَاثًا Say subhanallah 33 times. وَحْمَدْ ثَلَاثًا And say alhamdulillah 33 times. وَكَبِّرْ أَرْبَعًا وَثَلَاثِينَ And 34 times say Allahu Akbar. This is based on the hadith. And Imam Abi Dawood and Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah narrated and Ibn Sunni in Amal al-Yawmi wa layla on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abdul al-As that the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam khaslatani aw khallatani two characteristics or two attributes la yuhafidhu alayhi ma abdul muslimun two characteristics two qualities a Muslim believer does not hold on to it illa dakhala al-jannah except he would enter jannah two characteristics and attributes if you hold on to these two you're going to enter jannah Allahu Akbar the Prophet said this to us, alayhi salatu salam. What are they? The Prophet said, وَهُمَا يَسِيرُونَ And they are two easy things. مَنْ يَعْمَلُوا بِهِمَا قَلِيلٌ The Prophet said it's a very easy thing, but the people who do it are very little. The first one is, يُسَبِّحُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي دُبُرِ كُلِّ صَلَاةِ الْعَشْرًا After every prayer, the person says, Subhanallah, ten times. Okay? وَيَحْمَدُ عَشْرًا And he prays Allah Tabarakhu Ta'ala ten times. وَيُكَبِّرْ عَشْرًا And he says Allahu Akbar ten times. فَذَلِكَ خَمْسُونَ And that's how many? خَمْسُونَ وَمِئَةً بِاللِّسَانِ وَأَلْفًا وَخَمْسِمِئَةٍ فِي الْمِيزَانِ In terms of reward, in terms of what's said on the tongue is how much? If you do that five times a day, the calculation is going to be what? 150, right? 150 on the tongue like it and that would mean 1500 on the scale because the deeds are what multiplied by 10 and that when the person goes to his bed what does he say 34 for 34 times he says Allahu Akbar and then he says Alhamdulillah 33 times and Subhanallah 33 times فَذَلِكَ بِئَةٌ بِاللِّسَانِ How many, how many, uh, how many, uh, would that be on, yeah, that would be a hundred. 34, 33, 33, right? That would be a hundred, right? فَذَلِكَ بِئَةٌ بِاللِّسَانِ A hundred on the tongue, لَكِنْ أَلْفٌ بِالْمِيزَانِ On the scale, that's a thousand. You've just made 2,500 what? A day you've just got reward on your scale waiting for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. This is very easy, but little do it. Okay? That's what the Sheikh is advising you now. When you go to your bed, do these things. وَقُلْ and say, Allahumma qidi alabaka yawma tajma'u ibadah. Say this. When you go to your bed, say, Allahumma, oh Allah, qidi alabaka, save me from your punishment, yawma tajma'u ibadah, the day that you gather your slaves. Make this dua before you go to sleep. And beg Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Another word he says, يَوْمَ تُبْعَثْ عِبَادَكَ The day you resurrect your slaves. Ahmed and Abu Dawood and others narrated this. The dua is, Allahumma qini adabaka. Oh Allah, save me from your punishment. Allahumma qini adabaka. يَوْمَ تُبْعَثْ عِبَادَكَ Another word he says, تَجْمَعُ عِبَادَكَ The Shaykh then says, once you open your eyes from the sleep, وَإِذَا فَتَحْتَ عَيْلَيْكَ مِنَ النَّوْمِ if you open your eyes from sleep, okay, after sleeping, فَعْلَمْ نَوْ أَنَّ النَّفْسَ قَدْ أَخَذَتْ حَظَّهَا Know, once you've opened your eyes and you've woken up from your sleep, know that your soul has now taken its share. That sleep was you giving your soul its rights. And now it's got its share. فَقُمْ إِلَى الْوُضُوءِ Stand up to do wudu. وَصَلِّي فِي ظَلَالِ اللَّيْلِ And pray in the middle of the night. Get up, perform ablution, يعني do wudu, and pray what you can in the darkness of the night. Pray. مَا أَمْكَنَ Whatever you're able to. وَاسْتَفْتِحْ بِرَكْعَتَيْنِ خَفِيفَتَيْنِ And that prayer you're going to do in the night, open it with something very light. Don't make it heavy on yourself when you start. Because you've just woken up, just to get yourself... Uh, ready for what's going to come later, start with something very light. ثُمَّ بَعْدَهُ مَا And after them, رَكْعَتَيْنِ بِجُزْئَيْنِ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ 
pray another two rak'ah, two juz from the Qur'an. And then the Sheikh says, ثُمَّ تَعُودُ إِلَىٰ دَرْسِ الْعِلْمِ Go back to seeking knowledge again. فَإِنَّ الْعِلْمَ أَفْضَلَ مِنْ كُلِّ نَافِلَةٍ Because seeking knowledge is greater than any voluntary act that is done. This answers the question of so much students of knowledge who say, I want to seek knowledge, shall I seek knowledge or shall I pray Qiyamul Layl? The Shaykh has answered that for you. Pray Qiyamul Layl, but also seek knowledge. So reduce maybe on your Qiyam and uh, re-study. At this point, I would say to people, designate lessons that you know you want to go through. So for example, there's certain things that you need to study, start those books. If you've got a teacher who's teaching you now, this is the time to revise his, the notes that he's given you and what he's taught you, okay? And this statement where he says, uh, It is what Al Imam Shafi'i said. It's a statement of Shafi'i as well. Shafi'i said, ilmi, Seeking knowledge is min salati. It's better than any voluntary prayer that is prayed, seeking knowledge. But, brothers, you tend to see students of knowledge who, who don't pray Qiyam Layl. They say, uh, I'm seeking knowledge. Don't take away from that Qiyam Layl. It's very important. Nabi Muhammad prayed. Salafun of Salih, they prayed. It's the time Allah comes down, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a must for you to at least pray something. If you choose to read, read, but I can pray. That's why Ibn, uh, Ibn al Jawzi is saying here, praying is, seeking knowledge is more voluntary, but he didn't say don't pray. You can combine between the two. Yeah. No, it's Fajr. He says, when you pray Fajr, until Duha, he says what? He says, read. That's what the Shaykh Rahimahullah said. Yeah, sorry, when you return from your lesson, sah, uh, there's a lesson. So the lesson is from Fajr until Duha. That's when they used to seek knowledge. Which is true. Even me with my kids, by Salatul Duha, I'm finished with them. If they start the dars with me at yeah, I mean, uh, 5 o'clock, just before the Fajr a little bit, so they get up. And Duha is about 9 o'clock. Okay? It starts from there. Until 9 o'clock, 9.30, still in. So if the dars finish at 9.30, khalas. Full-time student of knowledge. And as a Muslim, there's a portion of knowledge you have to take daily. You don't have to be a studious person. Every single person has to learn something within their religion. Like for example, Ramadan is about to happen now. Every single Muslim needs to have the do's and the don'ts. The can or the can't of Ramadan. It's a must. So you can't say, I don't want to know these things. Of course, you don't have to learn the complex issues of the religion. You don't have to learn inheritance and issues like that. Maybe those are for students of knowledge. But every Muslim who yeah, and he wants to keep strong to his religion, there's no other way I realize a person to be very committed to their deen unless they're getting nurtured and they're getting some nutrition from the religion or they lose the momentum at the end. A person after a while, it's like, I can't keep up with all of this. And that's where they drift off. So you have to have that stimulation. It, it, may be not, it might not even be a, le a lesson. What about heart softening lecture? Where you copy down the benefits, the hadiths, something you have to take in daily. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a must for everybody. And everybody according to their ability, of course. According to their what? Ability. And what they can take. For example, the 42 hadiths of Al Imam al Nawi, it's so important for every Muslim. It talks to you about shyness. It tells you about taqwa. It's a very comprehensive book. Intention, loving for your brother what you love for yourself. It talks about oppression and wrongdoings to others. So it's a very important book. I think if you just study that book as a Muslim, you can be a mother, you can be a daughter, you can be a medical student, you can be a lawyer, you can whatever field you're in, 42 hadith of Imam Nawi. It's like a book every Muslim should try to get to know.